The clock has started and the candidates are off and running with just 439 days until the next presidential election. Good evening, I'm Pat Callahan. Right now the ballot for the primaries is a bit lopsided with just two Republican candidates, one President Trump seeking re-election, the other William Weld, the former governor of Massachusetts. Meanwhile, it feels as though about half of the entire Democratic Party is running for the White House. In fact, it's only officially 22 people. One of them made his way to Maine today to try to sway voters in his direction. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg received a number of standing ovations from supporters in Portland this evening. And his rally is the first for a major 2020 presidential candidate in Maine in this election cycle. New Senator Samantha York was there and she is here now. Sam, here's this young guy from Indiana. The biggest political job he's had is being a mayor and yet there seems to be something about what he is saying that's resonating with Maine voters. Yeah, Pat, absolutely. And that was definitely, pre you could see that tonight, I should say. And, you know, despite spending less time in politics and some of the other front runners in the Democratic Party, people really like him because they feel he brings a fresh approach to politics. He's a combat veteran. He's the first openly gay candidate for a presidential election. And what I heard from folks tonight is that he's young, yet cultured overall and just positive. And that's really what sets him apart for them. And he jumped right in, wasted no time before getting to laying out his plans on what he would like to accomplish as president. Exactly. Yeah, Buttigieg jumped right in to what he promises to bring to the table if he's elected, touching on everything from mental health, climate change, border security, human rights and women's rights. He also says he wants to see a leader in charge who really cares about public education. But the topic that seemed to hit home with the crowd more than anything tonight was gun control and combating gun violence. Here's some of what he had to say. We've got to draw the line in a more reasonable place that recognizes the fact that the kinds of weapons I carried in Afghanistan have no place on American streets or anywhere near American schools in peacetime. Uh, and so it is the job of those of us who are in charge to deal with that kind of stuff so that people getting through school don't have to. And I'm sorry that that hasn't happened, but I'm committed as president to making sure that it does. So after he laid out his pitch, he then opened the floor to questions to find out what's on the minds of some of the Democratic voters in Maine. Absolutely, yeah. And so some of the questions that popped up over and over again were about climate change. But he actually said that farmers here in Maine and actually rural parts of the country could play a big part in kind of turning things around. Um, and then the other huge talker, not just for him, but really everyone across the nation right now, mental health, specifically about more awareness and how to combat it in schools. There's also this myth that, that mental health is this extreme and extremely rare thing. We're talking about something like one in four kids have some kind of mental health yeah. challenge, right? So this is all of, all of our families, all of our circles of friends, all of our schools are impacted by this. And we'll know we're finally getting somewhere when it is as routine to get an emotional health checkup as it is to get a physical. I mean, why wouldn't it? Those two forms of health are just as important. And our plan will move us in that direction, including in schools and for kids. Now, you spoke with Pete Buttigieg after the rally, and I know one of the things that came up was the subject of immigration and what's been going on at the southern border. Yes, so that was a hot topic for reporters after the rally this evening, specifically about how the U.S. can bring Central American countries to the table to talk about what changes need to happen to make our immigration system more effective. He says the leverage to work with these countries is aid from the U.S., saying the approach we are taking now by threatening to remove it is counterproductive. Look, the only long-term solution to the migration coming from these countries is for people to be able to prosper at home. I think that's in everybody's interest, the countries themselves, the United States, and of course these families who are caught in the middle. Uh, but the best thing we can do about that is to actually invest, as well as working with regional partners across Latin America to try to assure stability, growth, and improvement there. Until we do, we're going to continue to see people fleeing for their lives, feeling they have literally no other choice uh, but to come to our borders, and that's going to continue to create complications and challenges for us. And one thing, Pat, that I think is worth mentioning is that every question that a Mainer had for Buttigieg this evening, he found each one of them in the crowd and addressed them personally. And I think that little touch will definitely stick with Mainers when they head to the polls next November. Never hurts to try to make that one-on-one -on -one connection. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam.